Hey, where are you going? Champ? Slugger? Hey, cowboy! Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going out! Hey everybody, it's Caleb here, and I was just driving through South Alabama. I had a couple quick thoughts that I'd like to share with you. First of all, I really love it when the environmentalists tell us that there just are not enough trees, that we're killing all the trees, that there are no trees out there, as you can probably see through the window there. South Alabama is just trees. <laughs> There's virtually nothing. You got maybe Andalusia, Enterprise, and Dothan, and trees. And that's pretty much it, other than Gulf Shores, which is the beach. So I genuinely believe that it should be part of our criminal justice system that any liberal that whines too much about there not being enough trees, that their sentence, their punishment for that, should be to drive through South Alabama because they will be immediately disillusioned about this idea that there are just not enough trees left in the world. There is nothing but trees for miles and miles and miles and miles. Another thing that I wanted to bring up, and it actually made me harken back to a comment that was made, I would say a few months ago by Hillary Clinton, talking about how the coast, in other words, the people in California and Oregon and Washington and then New England, that they all voted for her and everybody else voted for Trump, which, you know, is true. And then she also talks about trying to essentially explain why that is. She says that, well, all the dynamic people, all the movers and shakers and the people that are making money, those are the ones that voted for me. It was the, the neophytes, the little people over in flyover country that voted for Trump. And, and goodness knows that I'm not the world's biggest Trump supporter. I didn't even vote for the guy in the first election. But one of the reasons that she lost that election in the first place, and one of the reasons that Americans in general are just so tired of that is because there is a, a large contingency of the left that genuinely believes that only people in the cities are the ones that are dynamic and important. And I'm driving through South Alabama, and right now it's mostly just trees, but especially when you get a little bit further north, I was driving through here and I noticed there's so many fields with cattle and hay, and you get a little bit further south and you're gonna see an awful lot of cotton and peanuts and some soybeans. And so I really do think, and I think that this is important to remember, that though there are people in the cities that tend to vote Democrat and have never seen a farm, have never been through, quote unquote, the flyover country. I think it's incredibly important for us to remember that, yeah, they may look their nose down at, at people like that, but if you were to actually take one of those people and have them try to survive in an environment where there were not the people producing their food and their fiber in states like Alabama, that those cities would immediately devolve into chaos and die. And I think it's so hilarious that the people in cities look down their nose at people in the country, people in farmland, that kind of thing. And then they wouldn't even be able to begin to have a similar lifestyle that they do if it were not for those people. And maybe I'm thinking about this because I'm a ag major and state convention for the Alabama FFA is coming up. But what it really all boils down to is that whether they appreciate it or not, whether or not they understand the relationship between their life and what they're doing and people in places like this that provide the lumber for the house that they live in or the building that they work in and provide the cotton for their clothes and provide the food that goes on their table, they would quickly learn an appreciation once that stuff went away. Once they realize that the magic bread fairy doesn't just bring bread to the supermarket, that there are people involved in the growth and production and transportation of that, I think it would really paint it in a different light. And what I mean by that is, I don't think that it's productive for us to go out and talk about how silly and stupid they are and how ridiculous their position is on that, even though there's some truth to it. I think we do better catching more flies with honey than vinegar and explain to them and talk to them and educate them about the important role of middle America to the rest of the world, to the rest of the economy. Because the reason 
that we are an economic powerhouse, the reason that we have so many people that don't have to be involved directly in growing their own food and wondering where their food's going to come from one day to the next. The best way to do that is through education and helping them to understand that that is an important part of it. So let's just try to come at it from a diplomatic perspective and hopefully they'll be able to realize at that point that it's important for them to appreciate the American farmer.